Let these moments of impact define who we are. But what I never considered was what if one day you could no longer remember any of them. Welcome to Miss Mojo, and today we're discussing the shocking true story of The Vow. It's about being a person of your word and, and doing what you say you were going to do. It's a love story. For this video, we'll be comparing the romantic film to the autobiographical book it's based on, which means we are going to spoil parts of both. Did you know this movie was inspired by real events? Let us know in the comments below. Early in their marriage, Kim and Cricket Carpenter befell an accident that caused the newlywed wife to lose memory of her husband. I can remember hearing a gasp, like it was the last breath of air she could get, and I thought she had died. Following the tragedy, the couple co-authored a book about their relationship titled The Vow. While the 2012 feature of the same name begins with an incident that is similar to what the Carpenters endured, it takes liberties in basically every other department. I only did one psych rotation, so this may be terrible advice. But I think you have to try and fill the holes. The Husband the romantic leads presented in the movie are pretty different from their real-life counterparts. Channing Tatum plays the role of Leo Collins, a handsome hipster who lives in Chicago. Do you work? Do you have a job? <laughs> yeah, well, that's if I'm still in business. I own a recording studio. Hmm, cool. But while the character works in a creative field, the person he's based on was more athletically inclined. Kim Carpenter was a lover of sports, specifically baseball. In fact, he was the head baseball coach at New Mexico Highlands University when he first met his future wife. I pushed her pretty hard in therapy. You uh, did? Well, you know, I was a college coach and I'll tell you, to be in the position to be able to help rehab. Even though one is an artist and the other an athlete, both men are committed husbands. At least, it seems that way in the beginning. It was the greatest time of my life. I just thought how cool it would be to get to experience it all over again. The Wife Played by Rachel McAdams, the fictional sufferer of brain trauma is quite unlike the person she's based on. Maybe Paige will remember. Now why not let her come home and recover with people that she knows? And loves. The character, Paige Collins, nay Thornton, is a young woman from an upper middle class family. She's a student at the Art Institute of Chicago when she meets her romantic interest. Uh, you're an artist, a sculptor, a really good one. Right now you're working on four pieces for the Tribune Tower lobby. Cricket Pappas, on the other hand, was living in California when she began dating her future spouse. The young woman of Greek descent worked as a tele-salesperson for a sportswear company. Neither she nor Kim have much in common with the characters they inspired, so it shouldn't be a surprise that most of the story is pretty much an original fabrication. The biggest thing is the context of the uh, story is intact and very different. The way in which it's done is very moving. How they met. You know what, I, I noticed, um, <laughs> in a totally non-threatening way, we have the same RPP zone. Is that right? Yep. In the movie, Leo approaches Paige outside of the DMV, and the two immediately hit it off. The couple finds love where they least expect it, and the same can be said for their real-life counterparts. Their love story started in 1992, when the two met over the phone while discussing a business deal. As the head coach of a baseball team, Carpenter telephoned a sportswear company hoping to purchase jackets for his staff. He was struck by the odd name of the sales representative that answered and continued to call back hoping to speak with her. Despite the fact that Cricket lived in California, the New Mexico resident eventually got her landline number and the two began a long-distance relationship. It's about hope, it's about perseverance, it's about commitment. Dating and wedding A series of quick scenes sum up Leo and Paige's road to marriage. After meeting outside the state office, the producer and artist began to date and eventually move in together. I think you spelled movie wrong. No. <laughs> Unconventionally, the pair elopes at the Art Institute before kissing under the famous Cloud Gate. The same pre-marriage romance would have been impossible for the actual couple, considering they were based in completely different cities. Security. <clears throat> I now pronounce you man and wife, and best friends one. 
After first speaking over the phone in late 1992, Kim and Cricket continued to stay in touch. In June of 1993, he arrived at her home in California, donning a suit and bearing a bouquet of flowers. The coach asked the sales representative for her hand, and the two were married the following September. Mr. and Mrs. Kim J. Carpenter. The car accident. The fictional married couple is on their way home from the cinema when Paige makes a dangerous decision. Leo is at the wheel when his wife coyly suggests trying for a baby. Hey, I have this theory. Mm -hmm. That girl's guaranteed to get preggers if she does it in a car. She unbuckles her seatbelt moments before a truck slams into their car from behind, sending the young woman through the windshield. The accident is as tragic as the one actually endured by the Carpenters in 1993, but there are a few notable differences. How do you feel? My head hurts. Yeah, well, that's perfectly normal. I'll get you something for that. The newlyweds were on their way to Phoenix to celebrate Thanksgiving with Cricket's family. She was driving and he was reclining in the back when they were involved in a three-vehicle collision. Despite wearing her seatbelt, Cricket suffered terrible injuries. She had no life, I mean limp. I, I grabbed her hand, I'll never forget, and I told her, I said, don't you die after the accident. Following the collision in the movie, the couple is transported to a hospital and Paige is placed in an induced coma. When she finally comes to, she doesn't recognize Leo. Hey, you, you know who I am, right? Yeah, you're my doctor. Having lost all memory of the past few years, the young wife has no recollection of her marriage. This is the part of the story that is most similar to The Carpenters, but it's still not exactly the same. So, I just wanted to verify a few things with you about me, about us. While Cricket didn't mistake Kim for her doctor, she did deny being married. When pressed to remember her husband, the patient guessed the names of various men in her life, but never her spouses. They had me guess who my husband was, and I said, Todd, my old boyfriend. Mm. That went over well. <laughs> Cricket also suffered severe impaired cognitive, verbal, and mobility skills. She never fully recovered her memory. Generally, if it hasn't come back after two years after a head injury, then it never will. And it's been 20 years. Now, as far as my personality goes, you know, early on my personality was changed about 30 to 40%, but I would say it's much closer to what the old Cricket used to be like going home. When the doctor in the movie clears Paige to go home, there's a discussion among her family members about which home that should be. Her life with me is her normal routine. Yes, but that's a life she doesn't remember. She will. That's what her doctor just got through saying. No, what she said was that maybe Paige will remember. Now why not let her come home and recover with people that she knows? And loves. She can either go with her husband, who she has no recollection of, or her parents, whom she is estranged. In the hopes of regaining her memory, the character chooses to return to Leo's artsy apartment, but soon starts to feel out of place. Oh, no, don't. Uh, that one's for me. You don't eat meat. Oh. Unable to remember why she left her old life to begin with, Paige falls back into her old self and grows distant from her spouse. She eventually leaves his home in favor of living with her parents. Can I at least give you an awkward hug? <laughs> In reality, geography was a big factor in determining where Cricket went after leaving the hospital. When she got married, the newlywed moved from California to Las Vegas, New Mexico. However, she, along with her spouse and their companion, was on her way to Phoenix to visit her family when the crash occurred. We had to start literally all over. She had no motor skills, could not walk, couldn't brush her teeth, we had her in diapers. Cricket spent much of her recovery at the Barrow Neurological Institute and was expected to continue outpatient treatment after being discharged. This left practically no choice in the matter, and the young woman stayed in Phoenix with her parents. Apparently I would tell him, go home, go back to where you came from, because I didn't like him and I didn't know who he was. Mm -hmm. Despite her apathetic attitude towards him, Kim continued to be there for his bride, commuting by plane between two cities. After a couple of months, Cricket returned to her home in New Mexico. Mm -hmm. I had to separate myself from being a husband and become a father and a coach, and she would get very frustrated with me. Family relations. Paige's family dynamic is a main source of drama in the film. How is it that you're my husband and you've never met my family? You haven't spoken to them in years. 
Why would I, why would I ever stop speaking to my family? It all went down before we met. In addition to not remembering her husband, the character can't remember falling out with her parents. Leo's first time meeting them is at the hospital, and they don't exactly see eye to eye. We're only trying to do the best for Paige. Mom. That's interesting, because you haven't even asked her once. Well, no, but what I really need is for everyone to just stop bickering. While it makes for an entertaining story, Cricket was not estranged from her parents when she fell in love with Kim. In fact, she insisted that he ask her father's permission for her hand in marriage. Kim did in fact receive Gus Papa's blessing to wed his daughter before getting down on one knee. I didn't have any memories of the first wedding, so we did a second wedding. It, it was exciting that I actually got to put a memory to marrying Kim and that it wasn't just a story. And I was really excited for my dad to walk me down the aisle and wear my wedding dress. Religion. As the title suggests, both the movie and book focus on the marital vow a couple takes. The artsy elopement seen in the film is perfect for its free-spirited romantic leads, but not at all accurate to what happened. Did you write your vows on a menu? Kim and Cricket were both devout Christians when they met, and their shared faith was one of the things that drew them towards each other. The two married in the church, so their vow had religious implications. I made that promise before the Lord. You make that promise, you keep the promise. Their book about the accident and its long-term effects has heavy Christian themes. After the movie's release, Kim came out publicly and said he wished it had retained a faith-based message. To be able to write a book for the world to read about how God has worked in your life and your faith, uh, to me, that is, that is really uh, a, gr a wonderful thing and a great opportunity. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Divorce or happily ever after. Despite Leo's commitment, the couple from the film struggled to maintain their relationship. I'm not trying to hurt you. But I'm just... I'm so tired of disappointing you. No, no. Paige's dad, Bill, pressures them to get a divorce, and they eventually do. It's not until months later that Leo and Paige rekindle their romance. The movie ends happily with the artsy couple making a new memory together. What would you say to try in some place that we haven't been to before? Some place new. I like that. Unfortunately, the same can't be said for the Carpenters. After the accident, Kim and Cricket stayed true to their promise to be married for over two decades. In 1996, they even renewed their vows. But after 25 years of marriage, it came out that Kim had had an affair. The two divorced in 2018, six years after the movie's release. They're both trying to move on. Cricket is living with their daughter, Leanne. Kim is living with their son, Danny. I'll forever feel in my character uh, the guilt and the, and the shame that I have. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from Ms. Mojo. And be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.